Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to evaluate functions. The instructions are for us to evaluate the given functions at the specified um, input values. Okay. So let's say we have the function for number 1, f of x equals 2x plus 1. We're going to have three parts. Okay, so for the a part, let's say we want to evaluate f of 3. And then for b, we'll be doing f of negative 5. And then for c, f of x minus 1. Let's start with the first part, f of 3. Now to evaluate f of 3, all we are simply going to do is substitute all the x um, components of this function with 3. So instead of 2x plus 1, we'll have 2 times the value which x is attaining here, 3 plus 1. Now after carrying out this substitution, we're going to go ahead and use the order of operations to simplify the resulting arithmetic expression. Using the order of operations, we multiply first, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, that's your final result. Now let's take a look at the B part, f of negative 5. So the procedure here is similar to the a part. We are just going to substitute um, negative 5 for x in the function. So we have two parentheses. Negative 5 is our input value this time. So 2 times negative 5 plus 1. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. So there goes your output value for part B. Now let's take a look at the C part. We want to evaluate f of x minus 1. Okay, so we're going to follow the same procedure here. Our input instead of being a number is an algebraic expression. So f of x minus 1. So what we're going to do here is substitute the expression x minus 1 into all the spots that you have uh, x in this function. Okay, so that's going to yield 2 times the quantity x minus 1, close that, plus 1. Now let's go ahead and simplify this using the order of um, simplify this right here. So we'll distribute the two across the two terms in the parentheses first. That will yield two x minus two plus one. All right. Let's combine like terms. Two x. I mean, negative 2 plus 1, we yield negative 1, so the final result will be 2x minus 1. Now let's take a look at number 2. For number 2, let's say we have the function f of x equals x squared minus 3x. For the a part, we want to find f of 2 b part, f of 1 half, and then for the c part, we want to find f of the quantity x plus 1. Now let's do the a part, f of 2. For this one, we're going to, uh, what we're going to be doing is substituting 2 for x's in this expression. So we'll have 2 square minus 3 times 2. Let's simplify. 2 squared is 4. We have 4 minus 3 times 2 is 6. 4 minus 2 
is negative 2. Now let's advance to the B part. For the B part we have f of 1 half. Same procedure here. Replace all the x's with 1 half. So we'll have 1 half square minus 3 times 1 half. Question, what is 1 half square? 1 half square is simply 1 fourth, right? There are two ways of doing it. You can multiply 1 half by itself, or you can use the quotient, um, the power of a quotient property of exponents. 3 times 1 half, if you're not sure what that is, express 3 as a fraction. And what you're going to be doing is multiplying the top with the top, and the bottom with the bottom. 3 times 1 is 3 and then 1 times 2 is 2. Now let's simplify this. 1 half times 1 half just as we did here 3 over 1 times 1 over 2 we will apply the same process here. 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times 2 is 4. Now let's take a look at the C part. For the C part, what if we want to we are to find f of x plus 1? Okay, so what we're going to do is replace all the x's with x plus 1. So we have x plus 1 quantity square minus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, so what is x plus 1 quantity square? This is a caution you want to keep in mind concerning expanding um, binomial powers. So x plus 1 square, some might assume that you can simply distribute this power to these two terms which yields x square plus 1. This is incorrect. x plus 1 square can be simplified by multiplying x plus 1 by itself. Okay, negative 3x times x plus 1. This is another caution you want to keep in mind. When you're multiplying a negative number across a quantity, do not forget to distribute the sign. Negative 3x times x plus 1 is not equal to negative 3x plus 3. That's wrong. You have to distribute the negative to both terms, so the correct result will be negative 3x minus 3. Okay, so keep those um, points in mind. Now let's simplify this. We're going to expand. You can follow this out first, outer, inner, last. Because you're multiplying two binomials, that algorithm will suffice. So when you do uh, first, x times x, you have x squared, x times 1 plus x, 1 times x is x, plus 1, minus 3x, minus 3. Let's go ahead and simplify, okay? We're going to have um, x squared, Combining like terms, x and x yields 2x plus 1 minus 3x minus 3. Combining like terms, um, there isn't any like terms to be combined with x square, so we just bring down x square. 2x can be combined with negative 3x, that yields negative x. Plus 1 minus 3 is negative 2. There goes the final answer for part C. Now let's take a look at question number three. Question three, let's say we have this geometry formula. V equals two-third pi r cubed. You might be wondering what formula this is. This is the, the formula for the volume of a, of a hemisphere. Okay, you have half of a sphere, so you have 
um, a hemispherical uh, solid. This will be the fo formula for computing the volume. All right. Now, a part. What if we were to find v of three, and then b, v of two thirds, and c, v of three r. For the a part to compute v of 3, we'll simply substitute 3 for r in this function, which yields 2 thirds pi times 3 to the third power. Now I'm going to express these three factors as fractions so we can keep track of our multiplication process. 2 thirds times pi over 1. 3 to the third power is 27. That will be over 1 also. Now let's um, see if we can cross reduce. 3 does go into 27 9 times. So let's divide out. 3 goes here 1, 3 goes here 9. Now we can multiply the numerators across. 2 times 9 is 18 pi. In the denominator, we just have 1 times 1 times 1, so our final answer will be 18 pi. Let's take a look at the B part. What if we were to find V of um, 2 thirds? V of 2 thirds will give us 2 thirds pi, the radius. In this case, r is 2 thirds again, raised to the third power. Simplify, we'll have 2 over 3, express pi as a fraction, pi over 1 times. Now we're going to use the power of a quotient property of exponents to simplify this power right here. What does that involve? You simply raise your numerator and denominator to the third power. Okay, 2 to the third power is 8, and 3 to the third power is 27. Now, now let's go ahead and multiply. Well, let's see if we can reduce first. Okay, now are there any factors that can be cross reduced? 3 does not go into 8, and 2 does not go into 27. Okay, so no reduction can happen here. We'll simply multiply across horizontally. Okay, so 2 times 8 is 16. 3 times 27 is 81. So we have 16 over 81 pi for part B. Now let's take a look at the C part. Um, v of 3R. V of 3R. We're going to substitute 3R for R in the formula for the volume of the hemisphere. So that's going to give us um, 2 third pi times 3R raised to the third power. Simplifying further, we have 2 third pi 3 raised to the third power times r raised to the third power will, will be the result of applying the power of a product property to this uh, quantity right here. All right, so 3 to the third power is 27. r to the third power is just r to the third. Express everything as fractions. Can we cross reduce? Absolutely. 3 goes into 27. 3 goes into itself once and into 27 9 times. Now I'll multiply across, we have 2 times 9. 2 times 9 is 18. We have the pi r to the third power. And there goes your final result. Now let's take a look at question number four. Let's say we have the radical function f of x equals the square root of x plus six 
minus 3. For the a part, what if we were to find f of um, negative 6? To find f of negative 6, what we're going to do is substitute negative 6 into this radical function. So f of negative 6 is going to be the square root of negative 6. Let's put that in parentheses. Negative 6 plus 6 minus 3. Now the mistake most students make is they accidentally extend the radical symbol to include the term here. That is inaccurate. A good practice is to put a little line here to indicate the end of your radical uh, symbol. Now let's go ahead and um, simplify that. We're going to have the square root of negative 6 plus 6, square root of that and then minus 3. Okay, so be careful. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0, so we have the square root of 0 minus 3. What is the square root of 0? The square root of 0 is 0 minus 3. That gives us the final answer, negative 3. Now let's take a look at the B part. What if we're to find f of 10? Okay, so for the b part, f of 10 is going to be the square root of 10 plus 6, okay, minus 3. Now let's simplify that. We have 10 plus 6 is 16, minus 3. The square root of 16 is 4, 4 minus 3, Final answer is 7. Now let's take a look at the last part, part C. What if we were to find f of x minus 6? So to do that, we will be following the same procedure as we have been doing in the past problems. We are simply going to substitute x minus 6 for x in the radical function. So let's go ahead and do that. If we do that, we're going to have um, f of x minus 6 equals the square root of <clears throat> sorry about that, the square root of x minus 6 plus 6 and then we close our radical symbol, minus 3. There is nothing to be distributed in the radicand, so we simply drop the parentheses, and we have x minus 6 plus 6 minus 3. Now if you simplify the radicand, you're going to have the square root of uh, minus 6 plus 6 is 0, so x minus 0 minus 3 final answer is going to be the square root of x minus 3. Okay, so that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of um, functions, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments concerning the contents of this presentation, just place it in the comments section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. And also do visit mathcoserve.com for a collection of other math tutorials. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.